Welcome to the You're Not Stupid Guide, episode two. Got another one coming right up after this. I actually had that one done com and completed before this, uh, but it's a little bit angry. <laughs> this video is going to be about the Amiga, and specifically about finding files online and transferring them from uh, the computer, PC, to the Amiga. And, and it's getting a little deeper into uh, more technical things that you don't necessarily need to know, but it's useful to know, and it's a good thing to know. And it'll get you, uh, save you some time, I think, you know, because this can be a time-consuming process using the actual Amiga and taking things from the PC to the Amiga. It can be, it can take some time, so I'm going to show you how to save some time on it. I'm going to show you different techniques you can do on the Amiga end to make things faster. And even on the PC end, zipping things and things. And uh, it's uh, a little more t complicated than the last one, maybe. Maybe. Maybe not. I don't know. But I think this is something that anybody with a real Amiga is definitely going to need to do. This is not like installing Amiga games where you can get away with using the 12 discs, if you so wish. This is something that everybody is going to have to do, so you're going to have to know how to do it. And it's, you know, why not, why not save some time? So I'm going to show you some techniques for transferring files from the PC to the Amiga, I hope you enjoy. So after you've gone to the website of your choice and downloaded the um, completely legal, you know, freeware that they have out there, you know, absolutely freeware, you know. You know the stuff that people have released out of the kindness of their heart after, you know, you've gone off the internet and uh, done that. I like to organize my thing. I like to keep my desktop nice and clean. I can't stand a dirty desktop. So I'll put all my things into this folder, this transfer folder, which is linked as a pu in the public folders, and uh, or specifically on my classic system folder where I have neatly organized all my systems here and any, all my systems that I can transfer things to. So today we are focusing on the Amiga, and as you can see here, I have not actually transferred anything in quite some time. We got a demo there, we got lots and lots of mods. Love my mod music. We have some games here. And yes, I have not transferred any of these, so just out of curiosity, how much is in here? Fifteen megabytes worth of data. So I have several options of transferring this to my other computer. I can also in my transfer folder go directly to the computer of choice and uh, the one the one my classic computer is I named it Rose and, and it depend, well the computer's not on right now so I can't use it but if the computer was on I could just double click that and just drag and drop everything. You know, options are great. We love options so that is one option should the computer happen to be on, which it is not now, but since it, we do need that computer to be on to get this effect, we will go over to my other computer now. Having loaded up our classic DOS, Windows 3, Windows 98 machine, we are greeted with the desktop. I like to, I can transfer everything from DOS as well, but for the Amiga, I like to use the Windows 98 because the, the program that I use to transfer everything is a Windows program, and therefore I can't do it from DOS, so it's just one extra step taken out if I don't do it that way. But here I have another transfer folder. You can also map the drives, you can map your network drives to my computer and get every to everything that way, like this. But uh, that makes your my computer folder pretty big, and as you can tell, I don't like clutter, so I just like everything in a neat folder, transfer folder. And it just shortcuts it to the uh, network location. So the computer that uh, has the files right now is called Joy. Right there, and here's everything on there. Same things you saw on my other computer. So here's the Amiga folder, and yeah, we'll just make a new folder on the desktop here. And uh. What is the date today? Windows 98. You don't tell me. I don't like that. April 8th. So it's, it's 
four eight. And we'll just select all. It's tempting to cut and paste this, but don't do that because if anything happens on the transfer, you're fucked. We'll never get those files back. You have to download them all again. So just drag and drop them. 4812. Through the magic of TCP IP networking, it is now going from my computer in the other room. Actually, it's going through the wall via electrical outlet to another. From my router over there, through the wall electrical to another router, which brings it over here. And just like that, those 8 megabytes are over on the classic computer side. You don't, you don't necessarily need to put it on a classic computer, but you will need a COM port, a serial port, in order to get it to the Amiga. And there aren't too many new computers these days with those, so you're probably going to have to, you know, take things from a newer computer that you're using, download them, transfer them over, to an older machine. Now there are a million ways that you can do this. You can use a USB drive, you can you know, all kinds of flash media, um, you can use an FTP server. Oh god, don't use an FTP server. Please don't. Those are complicated messes. Crap. Don't use an FTP server. I recommend, I really recommend the TCP IP. It is, it's not the fastest. It's pretty fast though, but it's, uh, it is the simplest. Once you get it running, it is so easy to use and it's just organized. It is the best way possible. You don't, you don't deal with inserting flat, flash drives or floppy disks. Zip drive. I have a zip drive too that I could use, but you know, just, Ever since I've gotten this TCP IP networking to work on this machine, connected to my other Windows 7 machines, everything has been a blast. Now that we've gotten this done, we'll go to the next part of the equation. We're going to need programs to transfer this. There are two programs that you can use, that I use anyway. Classic Amiga Explorer, which I will would recommend for larger files. If it's just one disk, I do not recommend Amiga Explorer, actually. I recommend this this, this freeware program, ADF Sender Terminal, which will transfer just one file much better than Amiga Explorer. It's a little less complicated for me, and I like that one. But I'll show you both of them, but I'm going to show you what you need first, what you require beyond this step if you want to get any further tucked neatly to the side of the computer, we have a couple cords. It's just an extra spare cat cable to connect to the network. Should I have another computer over here that needs that, but right here, we have this serial cable. It's a special serial cable. I should actually look it up for you guys to get the right kind, but it has a either end. We have uh, two different COM ports here. The smaller kind, the bigger kind. I think this is 25 pin compared to, I think it's, what is it, 9 pin? Yeah. I think it's 25 pin, 24 compared to 9 pin. Connect there to the newer computers use this. The older computers like the Amiga use this. So this just gives you two different options to use. And, uh, all I have to do is drag this over to the Amiga, which is on the other side of the room from this computer. But, uh, I'll show you the back of it. In the back of the computer, I have it connected to this COM port here. The 9-pin one, I also have a 25-pin one on this computer, which I could have used. But just because the Amiga uses the 25-pin, you know, just, just to change it up, I used the 9-pin one on this computer. This is what you will need to transfer folders to the Amiga. And uh, this is a slow method. Much, much better way to do this. Well, much faster ways to do this. Not necessarily better, but faster, obviously. I would like a TCP IP, and I would like a network connection, but that would... Can't do that, having to have a hard drive on the Amiga 500 as well, so... 
in this instance, I am using the slow but you know true method of uh, basically dialing up the Amiga and sending it over the telephone line. And the drag R cable, I believe it's called a null modem cable, if I remember correctly. I actually got this cable long, a long, long time ago in like the late 90s, trying to uh, do some stuff with the Amiga, but I never, I never got to it at the time. It took me another, like, took me another 10 years to get to it, but yeah. Take our null modem cable, and we connect it directly to the Amiga 500 in the back. Because I'm demonstrating, I will take off this shit just to show you. Which I wish I didn't have to do. Because it's a pain in the ass. I don't like doing it. I don't like messing with this stuff. Is this good enough? This is good enough. Serial port. This is where you're going to want to connect it. Take it. You put it in. And do you ever get lucky on the first try? No. You never get lucky on the first try. So you turn it around, just fit it snugly. I wouldn't bother doing anything, whatever. Kind of in a bad location. That's why I don't have it permanently connected. I don't permanently connect it anyway, because I think it uses some memory. Oh, if you do that, so you know, don't do that. Let's hope that I have these joysticks connected correctly. I don't know. Things I do for YouTube. And I get 10 views. <laughs> I don't care about the views at all. Slowly but surely, people. They have dedicated boards for these, which you can uh, use to do a TCP IP. You can get a network connection on the Amiga 500. Obviously, the Amiga 600, Amiga 1200 come with, you know, flash options built in but uh, because of the lack of flash options on the Amiga 500 the most popular best model in my opinion overall classic model the Amiga 500 is these days it's almost like it's you know just don't buy it don't buy it because you can't get anything to it bullshit you can get everything to it it's not that big a deal people this is the best computer Amiga computer to buy best value for your buck and you can all the games were made for it all right you know AGA was okay it's nothing special nothing special don't get worked up about AGA nobody else did <laughs> that's why the Amiga failed <laughs> so we have our everything connected over on the Amiga side of things we have a couple options here now you need to open up that COM port. I'm using NTSC mode at the moment for, you know, so the scan lines don't drive you crazy. It doesn't pal mode for some reason. Um, we have a couple options. We have Amiga Explorer, which is what I'm going to show you first, I guess. I guess I'm going to show you that first. Amiga Explorer. Now, if you have an Amiga 500, there's going to be no way to actually get these programs over to the Amiga originally, you know, but uh, it's a hard thing because how, how are you going to transfer things to the Amiga if you can't, you know, get the program to transfer it to the Amiga? So Amiga Explorer, it's, it's, that's a commercial thing. I actually started with a different one, but actually I'm going to show you what I started with originally. I had to hand type this into BASIC, into Amiga BASIC, I had to hand type this, and my keyboard wasn't the greatest thing at the, at the time either. Uh, where the hell is it? Transfer PC. This is a basic program. I'm going to open up basic and show you it. If I can load it. Oh, God. Um, transfer? Is that what I named it? Yeah, this is... No file menus. That's that's terrible. Basic. God, this is what what you get from a Microsoft product, everybody. Transfers. What the hell is it called? Well, I'll use the Amiga's amazing ability to 
Multitask? No, I won't. Where the hell? Transfer PC. Oh, God. The Amiga doesn't handle spaces very well when it comes to this kind of stuff. Hopefully, it will work here. Transfer PC. Okay. Okay. Where is it listed? Do I have it listed somewhere? Here it is. Oh, God. Bring it to the forefront. Input. Okay, this is what you're going to need if you want to use the ADF sender terminal. Originally, to get the ADF sender terminal files over, you're going to need to write a basic program by hand. Input, file name, file, input, size, and... Uh, yeah. You write this, and you will be able to get one file, any file, and I, yeah, every, I, I can still use it occasionally. But basically, what this will do is if you click on it, transfer PC, and all you got to do is name the file, or yeah, you got to have the right, correct name for it. Um, let's say it was text, text.txt. And then you got to do the size. Now the size is a little bit iffy. I think you got to read the instructions. I think it's not ac the actual size. There's something tricky about it. You got to write in besides the real size. Maybe like one off. It's something like that. I don't know. Now you go over to the PC and use the ADF sender sender terminal to send a singular file over to the Amiga. And that is how I got single files over to the Amiga before I started using Amiga Explorer and how I got the ADF sender terminal files over. Now, problem with basic is, uh, we're gonna, how do we break this? Break, cut, break, control, control C, control B, we can't, yeah. Unless you actually go through with it, you gotta reset. Wonderful. So that's how you get the initial program over and once you get those folders over, you can have for ADF Sender Terminal, you're going to need to use the shell. It's not that difficult of a com command to learn. But uh, this is this is what you have other utilities for, like you know, ProWrite and Excellence, is to have these neat, wonderful little things called you know documents. Where you can actually write things to yourself so you know what you're doing. And... Uh, Here's TransDisk. TransDisk is the one we use to transfer single ADF files over to the Amiga without using uh, Amiga Explorer. Because I, I really like this ADF sender terminal thing. Uh, Amiga Explorer is just... This is one issue. I'll show you when I get to it, but... <coughs> TransDisk. To transfer ADF files via TransDisk from PC to the Amiga, take the following into a shell. Trans TransDisk. And that will send the ADF file directly to your uh, first drive. Now, it gets it gets needlessly complicated if you want to transfer it to your, another drive besides DF0. If you want to transfer it to DF1, it suddenly becomes trans disk greater than name of file dot ADF D track disk 1. Oh, please, if anybody that wrote this program is watching this. Get rid of that crap. Why can't it be transdisk slash df1? Okay? Why is it with this crap? This is all you gotta do to get it to, to the first drive, df0. That's all you gotta do. That's it. To get it to the first drive, second drive, just, no! That's too much crap. I never, I never remember how to do this. So I never even bothered transferring anything to the first drive. I wouldn't recommend it anyway, because the first drive's notoriously not very good. <laughs> we open up a shell. Type in transdisk w sir. Now we will get we'll get ourselves a brand new shiny floppy disk. They still make these brand new guys. You can still get these, you know. And this is the official Amiga ones. You know, it doesn't have a hole on both sides. Double sided, double density is just double, double sided, I guess. Use a brand new disc. Put it into the Amiga. I wonder what's on this one. I think I had something on there previously, but hopefully I have already transferred all that. Yeah, it's Monkey Island too. So 
press enter and now it will just wait for you to go to the PC end and send it this way back on the PC side of things we have our ADS sender terminal program we open that up you want to open up the port first port open that pretty much dials up the Amiga so now we're ready over there and then all you gotta do is press send and then find the folder Right, 15. See if we have a singular game we can use. Solomon's Key, King's Bounty. I guess King's Bounty would be good enough as anything. So we got King's Bounty. Just double click it. And as you see, it is transmitting file King's Bounty.adf. Because of this simplicity and because of the percentages, I don't I really prefer using ADF Sender ter Terminal to Amiga Explorer just for transferring singular disks over. You will see that uh, it is slowly going through the tracks. Track 11. You will see the disk drive is lit up copying files. It's a slow method. If you want to make it go a little bit faster, I can show you a method to do that, but it was only slightly faster. The more crap, obviously, the more crap you have running, the slower everything goes. The Amiga's COM port was notoriously slow, even back in the day. And it's a very slow port. It's like nine, it's like nine kilobytes or something. It's terribly slow. Maybe, maybe 90 at most. No, it can't even be that nine. It's got to be like nine kilobytes. And it's t it's terribly slow. You can eke out some memory. The more memory you have, the faster it goes. You know. Or you could use. Uh, you could use a floppy emulator. Uh, it's another emulator. Using an emulator on a real Amiga. I don't, it's, you guys, you're getting too close to, you know, you, you got the real machine because you don't, you don't want to use emulators and then you're using emulators anyway on the real machine. I don't understand that. But, uh, you know, it's one thing to use a flash cart, you know, thing, special thing for the Sega Genesis or Mega Drive or EverDrive. It's one thing to use that because you're dealing with carts and every cart is a singular. Every game is a singular entity. So you open it, you find it, you open it, they're alphabetical or whatever, you're good. The Amiga is not like that. If you use a floppy emulator, you still gotta go through files, you gotta th go through clumsy menus, you gotta load a disk, you gotta unload a disk. It's just, it's ridiculous and that uses memory. Yes, it's, it is. It's, you, you're creating new problems, and you're making it more of a pain in the ass than using actual discs. You know, I, so that's why I have never, I'm not interested in floppy emulators at all. But that is an option, or whatever. You can just download them all to the flash stick again, <laughs> to the emulator. You know, plug the emulator into the computer and uh, then deal with all those menus or whatever. And you can have it that way, or you can have an authentic experience like this disc. But, uh, and I got most of my, most of my Amiga collection that I have currently off online, from the online sites, has been, uh, transferred to the Amiga via this cable and via TransDisk here, ADF Sender Terminal. And it's, it's a very slow, tedious process when you have games that come on for discs and such. This, this program, I can only really recommend it for the singular discs. Or if you if you just have a couple or whatever, you don't mind spending some time, you know. But uh, that's not how I deal with. I used to do it like that, where I just you know immediately I download something and I'd immediately go to the Amiga, you know, I'd want to transfer it immediately, and it'd be just one game or whatever. Now I just let it sit there on my main computer, collect everything, and then before you know it, there's ten games ready to go to the Amiga. It's like, oh, wow, you can't do it this way. So there needs to be another option. And I have such an option. 8, 79, done. And just like that, we have a disc. So we end the command line. We take the disc out. We insert it again, and it should pop up as King's Bounty, which is a DOS game, so I can transfer it to the hard drive. I won't do that right now. I'll just play the game. Let's, 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 let's just launch it. New World Computing. Oh, wow. 
look at that classic logo. Look at good graphics for this one. The uh, precursor to Heroes of Might and Magic, one of my favorite series is, series of all time. So, you know, the, yeah, yeah, she really looks like a beautiful woman, doesn't she? <laughs> this might be the first transgender character in a video game ever. <laughs> Again, full screen, this is in 4.3. All, you see this on the Amiga, it's going to be all stretched into a widescreen format because everyone is using the default PAL emulation and everything. This is an NTSC game. It should be in 4.3. So everybody knows, but yes. Uh-huh. You can join me. I don't care. Anyway, you see, I transferred everything. It works nice and handy. Nice and dory. It's wonderful. Works great. So you guys saw just how big my stuff was there. How much I had like twelve megabytes worth of stuff. Now normally I don't like it to get quite that big because I like to put it in the RAM drive for faster uh, transfer speeds but I'll tell you the way to do it in this instance again this, these things aren't loading properly because normally I have it in PAL mode for workbench PAL mode shows you more resolution but anyways we're going to load up Amiga Explorer now normally again you can all of these options you don't need a hard drive for like all of this stuff can be put onto a floppy disk and done that way you don't need a hard drive to transfer folders over, transfer games and stuff. So, if Amiga Explorer, you know, Amiga Explorer, should you buy it, uh, I believe it will come, it'll automatically send itself once you hook up the cable and you run it from the PC end. It'll, the first thing it'll do is transfer this program over to a disk or a hard drive. And you'll have this program, so... All you gotta do is double click it, it runs in the program in the background, which I actually didn't want to do quite yet, I wanted to make it go faster. So I'm gonna make it stop quick, and I have a separate program, this is this is the program I needed to run if I wanted to run track disk, but uh, let's see if I even remember the command, do I remember the command, I think it's called quick fix, yes, <laughs> quick fix just it's a little shareware program I found on the bulletin boards and stuff that just makes your uh, serial port run a little, com port run a little faster. So anyway, we open up Amiga Explorer at this point using BodBandit.device. I replaced the serial again. BodBandit makes it just run a tiny bit faster. Also, because you can, I'm using the A Color Workbench of Mag Magic Workbench, which I had to hack in there, but. Uh, I'm going to use a tool, Workbench Plane. This is a freeware program I use to sub subtract the colors. That gets it to the normal four color. Do it again, and now it is just two colors. So this frees up a heck of a lot of memory, which we're, we are going to need. I'll also a little disk master, master for managing files while we're doing all this. We've already loaded Amiga Explorer. It's running in the background. Now we go over to the Windows machine. Over on the Windows side of thing, we're gonna launch Amiga Explorer. As long as it's connected, it's gonna come right up to you and then we're gonna get a directory of everything on here, so. And we have, it actually shows you both you know, the drawer and the actual ADF and hard drive image. It is actually as simple if you want to uh, transfer floppy disk and stuff, it's just drag and drop. Or otherwise, like, yeah, if I wanted to do a singular disk onto Amiga Explorer, all I would have to do is get an ADF, drag and drop it uh, into the uh, floppy drive. That's, it's, it's not complicated, but uh, still, then you gotta just. I prefer ADF Center Terminal for singular images. But we're not dealing with a singular image here. We are dealing with mods, a demo, a hard drive installable game that comes in the folder, an LHA file, 
and several ADFs. So we're dealing with a lot of stuff here. What are we going to do with all this stuff? Well, we're going to make it a little simpler for the Amiga to handle. And we are going to make a zip file, because the Amiga can handle zip files if you have the proper program. LHA is actually the better format, but I don't have any program that will actually create an LHA file. So we're just going to name it you know, 4, 8, 15. And we're going to separate them too, because we're going to separate them because they're so big. So we're going to put all the mods into this one zip file. I'm going to actually open it up first. Put them all in there. And just do the normal compression method. I've tried the best and it actually doesn't make it that much smaller for the Amiga purposes. Yeah, so we've condensed what was 5.8 megabytes down into... where did this file go? 4.27 so yeah we've we've lowered it by over a megabyte that's a nice ratio when we're dealing with the Amiga so we open up Amiga Explorer we open up the RAM disk and we're gonna throw it into the RAM disk to start with so we can organize everything later and just throw it in there and it'll start copying everything on the Amiga side of things you're gonna be hard-pressed to f figure out that it's actually doing anything other than the occasional memory going down there but that's why we have our fantastic disk master program which is as you can see it is we can see the RAM in real time depleting as the RAM goes down and here's our zip file went ahead and transferred everything over which you know, it's, it'll take some time not you know but that gives you this I perf I definitely prefer this method because just set it, have the thing transfer over, you know, four or five megabytes worth of stuff to the Amiga and just go do something else and come back later and, it's, and you've wasted no time whatsoever on it and you have everything there versus two discs if you want to sit around and wait for, you know, Amiga Explorer to write to two discs, it's going to take you 20 minutes, you know, so this is, put everything you need onto a zip file, throw it over to the Amiga side and now that We've done. We're done with transferring everything. We can add our back our workbench planes. Should bring back everything there. We have eight colors again. Nice and simple. And uh, so yeah, I put everything over into the hard drive because normally I keep it onto RAM if it's you know of a certain length because I'll just unzip everything to RAM. It'll be faster. But at four megabytes worth of stuff, it might go over the RAM limit of nine, so not gonna bother with that. Now, for LHA files, Disk Master, you can actually just double click it and it'll go through the stuff itself. But uh, unfortunately, it will not do that here. So, we're gonna have to use the shell. Again, you're gonna need a program. <clears throat> Which is just called unzip. I think you can find that on AIMnet. And uh, that'll do it. Just transfer it to whatever folder it is to make it easier. So uh, I put everything in the trash can. Oops. Uh, CD temp. CD for 8, 15. Unzip will start with the disk, so we do 4, 8, 15, disk, dot, zip. Now this is why you don't want spaces, because if, if this thing had a space, if I put a space between the 15 and the disk, it wouldn't be able to do it in the shell, which is a terrible oversight. I can't, maybe there's a way to do it, I don't know, but it's not, it's not simple enough. It, DOS, DOS had it till day one. This thing does not have such a thing. This is why I don't like, I don't really like the uh, long file names. It's nice to be able to read long file names. It's terrible to work with them. So right now it's 
it's uh, unzipping all of my uh, files here, and this won't take long. And this is a nice time to put some music on the horn while you're waiting for it to do this bullshit. Okay, so it's done. It's uh. It's done its thing here, so we're gonna go back into Disc Master, and uh, we're just gonna take. Right, we copied Gunship over to the RAM drive. We're gonna use Trans Disc here. Trans Disc W Gunship 1.ADF, and it writes it. And you will notice that it's going much faster. Look how fast it's going compared to how it does it when you're transferring it over writing it directly via the serial cable like it is just pounding it will get this done with this in a minute if we reinsert it it should pop up if, if it's a dos game it might not be i don't know it, i think it's a dos game where is it there she is Ooh, i can install it it's installable. I love installable games. This is nice. Saves discs. Very nice to have this. I will deal with that later. In the meantime, I wanted to show you guys some more fun stuff we can do. Since we're listening to mods, I'll show you all the mods that I got. So, CD trash can. CD 10. CD. 15 directory unzip 4815mod.zip how she moves which was just unzipped let's see uh, let's see how she sounds She drives me crazy. Is that what I think it is? Is that the pop song? It's very hard to find Amiga like songs that have ripped off pop songs and uh, like MIDI. You can find everything. Anything ever made by anybody, you can find it in MIDI file. Let's see what she drives me crazy sounds like. That's it. That's it. Oh my god. <laughs> Enough of that, because I don't want to get hit with a copyright notice. <laughs> wow, that is some nice guitar. Listen to that, guys. That is some fantastic acoustic guitar. I've never heard the Amiga sound that good with the acoustic guitar. Wow, that sounds amazing. And some electric piano. That's a nice electric piano, too. That, that guitar is amazing. I, that's fantastic music right there. DMS demo. A DMS is just like an LHA. It's just a way to pack a disc and make it a little smaller before putting it back into an ADF file format. It's a demo. I don't. I don't have any recollection of the demo, but uh, I'm gonna have to restart it. I think this one's gonna have to be in PAL mode. All the demos are in PAL mode, so let's restart the computer completely. This camera has a uh, PAL mode, but I switched to the PAL mode. It doesn't actually look any different, doesn't make the scan lines behave any different, so it's lying. It's obviously not in a real PAL mode. 
I even put it in my video software. It didn't change the thing from 24 frames per second. It didn't change it to, you know, so whatever. It's bullshit! Now this is actually utilizing the PAL screen. You know, it's actually filling the screen. This is how PAL should be. PAL should be in 4.3, just like NTSC. If you have, if you're playing a game, anything, if you're playing anything, and all you're getting is this widescreen type format, then you're in PAL mode when you shouldn't be. Even if it was designed for PAL, like it, it, it was a sloppy design, it should never be in widescreen mode ever. PAL has more resolution; it needs to show everything. I don't, I'm gonna do a whole video on NTSC versus Pell. Oh! Hello! This is why I got this, I think. <laughs> Hello. I love a uh, nice, a nice nude pixel pixel art. I love, I love me, some, I love me some nice nude pixel art. Greetings, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the new uh, "You're Not Stupid" guide. Episode 2, yeah, I'm going to link you to uh, episode 1 of the series, which is my most popular video so far. It's got the most views and the most likes. Um, I don't know if that's because of the Amiga end of it, the uh, specifically transferring things, or or if it's or the installing of the hard drives, which that one is about, or if it's some, or if it's just the name, the You're Not Stupid Guy. Maybe it's just the name. Hopefully it's just the name, and maybe i got something going there. Anyways... I'll link you to that video if you want to go check that one out. Um, next thing I'll link you to is the Love Dungeon video, which was originally part of this video, but this video was already getting too long, so I just extracted it and uh, made it made it its very own video, which is why it kind of starts a little awkward. But uh, that one's cool because the author actually uh, commented in the uh, comment section and. Uh, told me I was a hopeless player. I'm a hopeless player. We'll watch that video and uh, see who you side with. And uh, finally, I will link you to my newest video besides this one, the uh, Detroit, Downtown Detroit in Super 8. I love that. That's one of my favorite uh, Super 8 films. Super 8 stuff isn't getting too much attention. Uh, I, I guess I understand you guys are computer people, but this channel is a nerd, retro nerd channel, so I'm still going to uh, post that kind of stuff. And I hope you guys like it. Anyway, and you'll watch it. It's only three minutes, guys. Um, anyway, I hope you'll subscribe if you like any of this stuff. If you want to see more of it, comment like any of that stuff i appreciate the comments i always respond to them because nobody comments so <laughs> give me a shout guys um anyways i will uh, see you guys and there's another one there's another you're not stupid guy coming up very soon it's going to be about the nes and the myth quotes um quote end quote that uh you can't blow into it and get it. That's the, you can't blow into it and get the cartridge to work. That's a myth. I I do not believe that. I think that is, there is some truth to that, and I and that's what the next video is going to be about. And I also have some more videos. I have like three other videos with stuff all shot, and I just haven't put them all together yet. But uh, let's see which one comes out first. I don't know. Bye.